Hi, welcome to BuffZone.com. My name is Kyle Ringo. I'm the CU beat writer for The Daily Camera. With me is Neil Welk, veteran sports columnist for The Daily Camera. And Neil, the last time the Buffs won a football game, Tony Blair was still Prime Minister of England. <laughs> and the last time the Buffs won a football game, Gary Barnett was the CU football coach. It's been a long time, Kyle. They're 0-5. This is the uh, third time in the last about 26 years that they've been 0-5, and sadly I've been around for all three of those uh, uh, instances. Uh, can they change it around this week? They better change it around this week. I mean, losing to Montana State, you, you'd think that's the bottom of the barrel. They're a Division I AA team. And losing to Colorado State, your in-state rival, that's another thing. That's, that's pretty... Uh, pretty down moment for CU fans, but losing to Baylor, which comes to Folsom Field this week, is a whole different ball game. The Buffs are familiar with losing to Baylor. The last time they played in 2003, they lost down there in Waco, but losing up here, extending the losing streak to 10 games, which would tie the all-time school record, would be a new low point in a program with a lot of low points recently. Yeah, they're, re they're rewriting the record book for low points. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, Kyle, right now they have the third longest losing streak in the nation. They trail only Duke and Temple as far as Division 1A losing streaks in, in, in Division 1 football this year. Uh, stretching back to last year, they've lost nine in a row. Uh, I think in a perfect 10 would be a disaster for this team. They've got to come out. They've got to figure out a way to win the football game this weekend. They need it desperately. I think uh, if they don't, uh, this thing could swirl out of control in a big hurry because you're seeing players start to have, there's a little bit of tension, a little bit of dissension among the coaching staff and the players now. And uh, if this thing goes on much longer, I think it could be a big, big, big problem. Yeah, without a doubt. I think you're exactly right there. And the, the thing about losing to Baylor, Baylor, you have to understand, has, lo has won nine games in the 11-year history of the Big 12 Conference. They've won nine Big 12 Conference games, including their last two. They won their opener last week with Kansas State in Waco, and they won their uh, season ender last year against Oklahoma State, I believe it was. So they, they actually have a two-game winning streak in the conference coming here uh, this weekend. But losing to Baylor is, is uh, commit, it's considered a mortal sin. In, that it is. In, in, the, in the Big, Big 12, 12, Baylor is the dregs. When you talk about Big 12 football, Baylor is the basement. Baylor is the cellar. Baylor is the standard by which you measure all other bad programs and bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> and if they lose to Baylor this weekend, you can put Colorado in that group right now. There's no other way to dress it up. There's no other way to make nice about it. Baylor is not a good program. They have historically been a bad program. Colorado has to come up with something this weekend. Uh, the good news is I think that I still believe, and maybe that's the optimist in me, that there's just there, Colorado is just a few hitches away from putting together a good, solid, all-around football game. Again, last week down at Missouri, they had some stretches where I thought they played relatively well. They did some good things. They put up a lot of yardage on the board. They didn't put a lot of points up. But I think they're getting better, and I think that if they can turn that corner, they have a chance still to be a good football team down the stretch this season. I don't recall watching a team in recent history here at CU that uh, had such a lack of belief in itself. I mean, this team needs a win so badly just to uh, kind of turn that corner and start to remember what it's like to win again. I mean, so, so much of succeeding in college football is just that level of confidence right there. And the Buffs are at a point right now where – they are completely lacking in, in the confidence area. They're waiting for something bad to happen. Exactly. Every time they get down near the goal line, they're waiting for something bad to happen, whether it's going to be a penalty, whether it's going to be a drop ball, whether it's going to be a fumble. It, it's almost as if they know that something bad is going to happen, and they're just waiting for that shoe to drop. They, they don't have the confidence that they can make that play. Even against Georgia, when they have that lead going into the fourth quarter, you know that they're sitting there thinking, my gosh, you know, this can't be happening. Something bad is going to happen. And sure enough, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that if they can come out this weekend and, and do all the right things and get a win, I honestly think that they can turn some things around and still have some, some success this season. But uh, this is a game that if they lose this game, uh, they're 0-6. They're virtually eliminated for any kind of bowl potential. And uh, you could see this season go south in a hurry. 
Did you just actually mention bowl potential? <laughs> you've got to have some kind. You've got to have some kind of goal to set forward. And and when you've got these seniors on the team, the Thad Washingtons, the Brian Daniels, that's the last thing these guys have. That's the last hope that they're they're holding on to is that they can finish up a six and six season and go out there and and maybe you know qualify for one of the bowl games. That's the last hope they have. Well, you heard it here first. Come back next week and we'll talk CU bowl possibilities. <laughs>